Fears of heightened insecurity in Nigeria's federal capital territory have led to another immediate closure of all unity schools in Abuja. We look at this and the threat by issued to President Muhammad Buhari by terrorists. Is there any end in sight? Also, Nigerians have been given some much-needed chair as Tobia Musa uh, has set a new world record in the 100-meter hurdles at the ongoing World Athletics Championship. We'll analyze this on a program with a guest sports analyst. And of course, we have uh, in-depth analysis of the news of our headlines today. Very good morning to you and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Kofi Bartels. It's a brand new uh, week and of course it's a beautiful, beautiful Tuesday morning. We're back with the discussions and analysis on the issues that matter to you on this particular program. Once again, you're welcome. We usually start with a top trending uh, segment. This is where we look at stories making the rounds uh, on the social media, the internet and what people are really um, talking about about so let's go to this one um three of the abuja kaduna trained victims uh, have regained their freedom and if you remember uh from the weekend you had a video circulating on social media um where these uh, victims those who were kidnapped uh, by these terrorists of the abuja kaduna uh, bound train these uh, passengers rather were kidnapped by terrorists on that rail line it was a big story um, this very grueling uh, video released by the terrorists, you can see there, in some forest somewhere uh, where we don't know, um, being beaten, being beaten by the terrorists with sticks, with canes, um, with all manner of things. And uh, it was quite grueling. One of them was seen giving a speech uh, to the, 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 the video, the camera, and saying some things. It was shocking for uh, many uh, Nigerians and people around the world to see the, the victims of this train kidnap or uh, uh, kidnapping being beaten. You see them in the bush, we've had complaints. This, no, this is a third or so video that has been released by the terrorists. Um, now, three of the victims seen in that video uh, have, been, have been released, um, you know, so far. This now uh, brings to 22 uh, the victims who have regained their, their freedom out of the total number of 62 um, hostages abducted on that train, that ill-fated train. Uh, this brings to 22. We're told that they secured their freedom at about Monday, yesterday, 11 a.m. Uh, it is not clear whether some ransom was paid. Uh, investigations revealed that they were released by the terrorists at a location inside the forest along the Kaduna Abuja Highway. At a location inside the forest along the Kaduna Abuja Highway, from there they were picked up by their relatives. As it stands, none of the victims has been rescued by uh, security forces. Um, they've not been able to even find their location. Uh, but, you know, ransom has had to have been paid by the rescuees or those who have been rescued so far, 22 of them, and uh, if you want to count the amount of money, you can look at, uh, uh, at that, but of course money cannot be equated to life. Now you've seen the picture of the gentleman, uh, the one at the bottom left corner of your screen is what he looks like, a regular picture of this gentleman. And the one at the top left corner was when he was filmed in that video that was released, uh, giving a speech, all right, giving a speech. Uh, saying some things in the video and the one at the top right and bottom right was um, when he he was uh, released of course he had a bath I'm sure he had some food and then he had a, a shave you know uh, they released this video on Sunday it doesn't we don't know when it was recorded but they released this video flogging their hostages and uh, of course threatening to abduct President Buhari and the uh, Kaduna State Governor Malam Nasser El Rufai. that's how things have um uh, fall into uh, in the country. Of course, the gentleman you're seeing in your screen um, show the, the 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 fear and the, um, uh, the 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 anguish that his family and friends may have gone through seeing uh, seeing him. Uh, of course, may have led to them quickly saying, "No, we need to do something. 
about it. And it's not a surprise that, um, you know, barely 24 hours after that video surfaced, he was released. I'm sure the family members may have said, hey, look at our brother. He's still there. He's going back. Um, he needs to come back to us. He's going through a lot. So, so far, uh, 23 victims have been released. Uh, millions of Naira uh, have exchanged hands. You know, some of them play, paying millions of Naira uh, uh, to regain their freedom. It's, it's quite a sad one, indeed. And uh, this, this is just um, really so sad. This is just really so sad. You know, you look at the picture of this gentleman. He looked so healthy. You know, the picture before he got abducted on that plane. He looked so healthy. He looked so fresh. Even a bit lighter skinned, you know. And you look at him yeah, on the top left. You can't even c connect the two. You know, and you can't even connect the two. There are women and children in the bush. Only God knows if they eat, you know, in 24 hours. Look at how, how famished he looks. Look at how, how lean he looks, malnourished he looks. Um, it, it, it must be very difficult for the families and friends of those who are going through the trauma of seeing their, their friends, their relatives, their brothers, their sisters. Look at the children, you know going through a lot of things, and then they cannot rescue them. And they don't know if the government will rescue them at all. It is quite sad. And these terrorists released these people on the Abuja Kaduna Highway. There was no policeman there to arrest them. There was no soldier there to arrest them. Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. So, I mean, does this mean that they can launch another attack if they want to? Does this mean that they can carry out their threats? So look at the threats as we go on. We look at the threats. Because the government, ha of course, uh, they've said something, the federal government or the presidency uh, through the presidential spokesman. So we'll look at this uh, when we, we, we come up with our first topic on the program. Let's move on now. We spare thoughts for those who are in the bush. We spare thoughts for and prayers so for those who are there that they will find their, their way out. How many of these families can afford 10 million naira, even 1 million naira? How many of them? to release their brothers and sisters. Let's go on. Um, a man who hopes to be the solution to all Nigerians are complaining about, uh, Peter Obi has uh, taken. This is a presidential candidate of the Labour Party. Um, he's, uh, it's a frenzy. It's Obi mania on social media in Nigeria today. Is the most discussed person you know, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. You go to Google searches being written about in, in, on the blogs, on the newspaper websites, being talked about on television, everywhere. Um, the gentleman, presidential candidate, has had to come out to, I think for the third time, if not more, appeal to his uh, supporters uh, on how they conduct themselves, especially on uh, social media. You can see his tweets in front of you. He had a thread, two tweets, put out at 3.55 p.m., yesterday. He says, quote, um, he says, quote, uh, I most sincerely appreciate all of my supporters and those of Labour Party. I love you all. I wish to appeal to you to allow me personally respond to any candidate. You see, he put the words candidate in capital letter. We'll come to that in a second. Any candidate that makes comments about me while you concentrate on issues to promote our cause of moving our dear Nigeria from consumption to production, create jobs, and generally evolve a better Nigeria, he signed that PO, which means he put out this tweet himself. Of course, we are aware um, that uh, his rival in the People's Democratic Party, that's a rival presidential candidate, but in life, is not his rival. The man refuses to make Atiku Abubakar is rival. He keeps having glowing words for Atiku. He calls him his boss. He was even there, uh, uh, present at Atiku's um, unveiling when he announced that he was going to uh, run for the position of president and seek the PDP's domination. Peter B., who is supposed to be his rival in this presidential race, attended and had nice words for Atiku Abubakar. That's bizarre in Nigerian politics. Now, he is saying to his supporters not to attack the candidates. He's not said anything about other people, regular people who are not candidates on uh, social media. He usually would always talk to his supporters about the candidates. He's telling them to please be 
uh, to not to address or respond to any candidate. Um, Atiko Boka had some things to say uh, about uh, the OB presidential, uh, you know, ambition, the Labour Party and his supporters in an interview granted to a television station over uh, the weekend on Friday, particularly. And one of the things that Tiko Abubakar uh, said was that it would take a miracle uh, for Peter Obi to win the <laughs> to win the presidential election. Also talking about the supporters of uh, Peter Obi being on Twitter, etc., uh, uh, etc. Et talking about also uh, the fact that uh, he said 90% or so of those uh, voters in the northern part of Nigeria are not on social media. Uh, this is not the first time, like I said, uh, the Labour Party presidential candidate will be cautioning um, his supporters uh, to be tolerant of others, the viewpoints of others. All right. Of course, if you remember right to here on this program, we discussed and analyzed uh, the, the backlash uh, many obedience, as they are called, or they call themselves, gave to the pastor, the senior pastor of a covenant Christian Center, uh, Pojo Yemade, uh, after he put out some statements about, um, uh, you know, canvassing for votes and the elections and all that, without being particular to any candidate, they felt that he was uh, taking a swipe, or it was directed rather at Peter B. and they called him all sorts of names. But some were saying this is the same man who gave uh, Peter B. the platform uh, to air his views and to, you know, sell himself uh, outside being a politician. Um, so the videos that uh, you're using as obedience to, to market the man to others on social media. Um, so, but what is, what is most interesting, uh, I would say, are the responses by uh, some of the supporters of uh, Mr. Obi to his tweets. Um, it's quite bizarre. You know, this is unlike anything that you will ever see on, on, on social media for any politician. The supporters, some of them are rejecting the man's tweets and are telling him to, um, to, to mind his business and leave them alone, you know. One says, with all due respect, sir, no be you, go tell us waiting we go do. If they bring war to you, we will fight back. If they bring gas to you, we will help you cook. All we need you to do is just wear your black attire and black shoes, attend meetings, make big moves, and become our president. You know, um, another one says, uh, 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 Peter B, how your supporters respond to other candidates should be the least of your worries. There are more pressing issues to address. You know, another one says, obedience to creating a better future for Nigeria, not to anyone. If Peter B, too, makes any unsavory comments, we will come for him. So some people are, or the young people, especially the mostly young people, are saying on Twitter, Another person who calls himself Chemical Brother, this one got a lot of attention. He says to Peter B, appeal denied. Don't try this next time before we change up for you. So uh, apparently this is going from uh, rejection of his appeal to outright threats to change it for him. And of course, I'm sure you know when we say we go change up for you in Nigeria, you understand. Uh, it's quite strange. Some people have been threatened with, with, with fiscal harm, you know, for airing views that seem to, uh, that are, are interpreted as being against Peter B. A popular Twitter user, Ogbeni um, uh, uh, Dipo, he's called on Twitter, has claimed that uh, he's been threatened uh, with being stoned if he returns to Nigeria uh, for sharing views that have been seen to not support Obi, Obi's ambition, you know. So people saying things like that. In fact, yesterday someone told me of air that uh, they have a group called uh, the Violent Group uh, in the uh, obedient supports or supporters for, for Peter B. And uh, what they do is uh, they just attack anyone who seems not to share views uh, charitable of their man. Anyway, he has talked about the candidates. He said, do not reply any candidate. Allow me to do that. And OB has duly responded to some of the statements credited to uh, Alhaji Atiku Abubakar. Uh, That's what he's saying. But his supporters are not having it at all. We'll see what happens from here, <laughs> from here on. Let's uh, round this uh, off with a look at uh, what's been happening in India. All right, India is usually in the news for different reasons. This one is a quite a bit of a, a twist. Um, with um, Miss Drupadi Momo becoming the first uh, female president of India. It's quite um, 
an, an interesting one, quite a new one. Uh, Drupadi Mumu was sworn in yesterday as India's 15th president at an impressive ceremony in the packed historic central hall of the Indian parliament. She's not just the first female Indian president, according to um, uh, the report, but she is also um, the first tribal leader to assume the office of president of India, the first tribal leader to uh, assume the office of president of India. Don't forget, we've had female prime ministers of India uh, before, uh, so that is well documented. But this is a position of a president and not to be confused with the position of prime minister uh, of India. She's a tribal leader. She hails from the Santhal community. All right, so in India, their tribes are really quite important. You know, it's a multi, multi-ethnic nation, um, just like we have in parts of Africa, including uh, uh, Nigeria. Uh, Chief Justice of India, um, N.V. Ramana, administered the oath of office to Murmu uh, in the presence of a Vice President V. Uh, M. Venkaya Naidu, of course, and Prime Minister, like you see there, Narendra Modi, who is uh, sharing a flower uh, with her. Um, Lok Shaba, the Speaker uh, of the Indian Parliament, Governors, Congress, Presidents, and all that, were all there in attendance as well. This is quite interesting, all right, uh, a historic moment uh, in India. And I'm sure a pointer to how things can be done to carry people along. Maybe Nigeria needs a ceremonial uh, a, a position, you know, like that, just to, I mean, look, look for a way to, um, to assuage things. You know, in some countries, the position of president, you know, where they have a, a situation of prime minister, uh, a, a, an office of prime minister is usually ceremonial. Like in Germany, you have um, the office of the, the chancellor, all right? The German chancellor is the one who runs government, whilst the German president is there in a ceremonial, um, on a ceremonial basis. You know, back in the days, you used to have what you call head of government business in some of the governments around the Commonwealth, the former British colonies, head of government business. That is no longer in existence, but in some countries still have, have heads of... So, in, in, in India, the head of government is the prime minister, but the ceremonial head of the, uh, uh, of the country is the, the president. You understand? So, when it comes to policies, decisions, the, the prime minister will take those, but the president is there. Sort of like uh, where you have the queen, maybe, maybe it's a looser uh, uh, description. You have the queen in England and you have uh, the prime minister. It's a very loose, a loose one. So it's, it's good to see, you know, and sometimes this decision are taken uh, with the thoughts of national unity in mind. A cue for the politicians and uh, policy framers in Nigeria. Congratulations to her. Let's uh, take a break. We'll be back as we analyze uh, the headlines on the front pages of the National Dailies. Please stay with us.